Sound effects in this podcast is brought to you by Festly and Studios, BattleBars.com, and Pro Sound. And some of them are made by the Dungeon Master himself. This show is R-rated, so everybody be advised. Hey, nerds and geeks, welcome back to Nordic D&D, the Ariana Saga. My name is John, and I am your host, narrator, and Dungeon Master in this Dungeons & Dragons podcast. In this episode, we're going to conclude this section of Sovan Wolferen and continue back to meet Hadurai, Hunter, and Kettle, who are in bliss at this moment. I don't have so many announcements to do, but I am going to start off with a cinematic scene. Here we go. In the fiery realm of the god of destruction and war sits Ignitus. He calls out in frustration. He can't be summoned. Where is Nemeron? My lord, he is the master of schemes. Where is he? My lord, I trust he is doing your bidding and will not show himself until he is done. But Erok is summoned and awaits you. Send him in. And the great doors of the Hall of the Demon God, Ignitus opens. And then Erok comes walking in. Milo, Milo. He bows down to Ignitus. Silence, Erok. You do not speak. I see no progress in your actions. Your attempts with your offspring have failed. He has refused you, and yet he lives. This is an insult. You are both going to burn in my torment. But, but my lord, my lord. What do you plan to do, Erok, before I throw you into the Aeor flames that even burns the skin of demons? Speak! Be patient patient, a little longer, longer, my lord. lord. I have found found another eager to serve. And I will be conjured to a physical physical soon soon. again. My new, my new puppet, puppet. puppet. That's what I command. I command. And your offspring? He will be he punished. Will be punished. No, Erok, you will die. You will kill him, and I will send his soul to an eternal fiery torment. Go, Erok. This is your last chance. But he is mine. Do as I command. command. And Erok is sent back to Ariana. And you. And Ignitus points to one of his imps. Find Nemeron, or other actions must be made. My patience is running thin. And so we are back from this cinematic scene where we met Ignitus, the god of war, and Iraq, his general. For some reason, he can't find Nemeron anywhere, but we'll have to figure out later on why that is. This episode is going to be a bit different because we're going to skip uh, camp lore in this episode. As we're moving along, it's going to be harder and harder to fill out the gaps with lore. And I'm not going to have a lore segue in all episodes. I think we filled out already enough or a lot of it. And I don't think that there's a reason to keep on having it in each episode. But, of course, the more I write, the more you'll get enlightened with lore in my world called Ariana. Anyway, we are going to have a small scene with Sovan to conclude what happened the last episode in the graveyard city of Woy. Before we go on to follow again Hunter and uh, Kedal. I said Hadurai before, but... As you'll find out in this episode, Hadurai is still fast asleep, recovering from the soul crystal that tormented him. But before we get to Kettle and um, Hunter in Bliss, let's take a listen at what's going on with Sovan Wolferen. So as you scream for help, you hear something running at you and you see a light and you see that the gravekeeper that you met, met as you entered the room falls to his knees right beside you and tries to pull you, pull you out of the ground. Can you roll a strength check? 
<laughs> I, okay. Okay, I'll try with the adrenaline pulsing through my body, even my even though my strength isn't very high. I get a sixteen. With disadvantage, you are exhausted. Oh damn! It. Okay, with this at ah four. Four. Okay. As he, the old man, is trying to pull you out of the ground, you see from behind them is coming something flying through the air. Steps right behind him, <sighs> strikes a blade through his body, <sighs> lifting him, him up. And as you see, you see this grey asimar looking creature with black wings. And he throws him to the ground, lifts his blade up, and cuts his torso in two. And you just hear him say, Another cleric. Dead. And he looks at you, and he turns around, and he just flies off. What on earth? What's, what's happening? What's that? What's that? No, it can't be. What's that, Cyrus? So guys, here is where we're gonna leave Sovan Wilferen, played by my brother Charstan Johansen, in this storyline of Sovan. He is halfway stuck in the grave in Voy. He just watched the guardian of Voy being slaughtered right in front of him. He has a nocturnal Kree, and we will have to get back to him in a later point to see what this book is, what he's going to do with it. Now the story is gonna go back to Hunter, played by Marstin, Kettle, played by Bastian, Merkenbach. But now we're gonna go back to follow their story. But before we go to Bliss uh, to find their heroes who have fled from the King of East Morrow, they are now stationed in the West. We're gonna have a little stop at a cinematic scene. In a desolate cave somewhere. A covenant of witches have gathered. They call themselves the Crows. They plan something. We know not what it is. Let's take a listen. Sisters, since we were conjured and summoned in the lands of Amek, we have raised havoc. <laughs> and I have been informed that we are near full of mound of the blood pool. And soon we will start the ritual of Sikaron. <laughs> and make way for a crown. Sisters, make ready the items, make ready the conjuring. The light will vanish in the shadows. <laughs> this was just a cinematic stop in the caves of the crows. And now we are going to continue the main event with Kettle and Hunter in Bliss. Last we left our heroes, Tarogrim had invited Hunter into his tent to bond. He wanted to know him a little better, a little bit more intimate, and he talked about what events Hunter had been gone through leading them up to Bliss. He talked about his journey into the Arachne's cave, how he met Kettle, and how he met Eva Venlar, the scholar, the king's advisor. They were all led to the Arachne's cave and they found out later on that Eva was looking for a book called the Nocturnal Cree. It was unsuccessful, they did not find it. But they were also find resources for the king that they did find. 
he also found an old ally of Eva called Victor Reith, who had transformed into a huge drider. But he had become mad in his mind. He didn't even know Eva. He didn't even know who he used to be. Glimpse of memory returned as Eva tried to talk to him, but he became vicious, angry, and attacked the heroes. They fought for their lives and they killed the Drider. And then they were to enter the tomb of Arachne. They hoped to only find the remains of him, this old, historic, ancient monster. But he was found alive. He ran just past the heroes, out into the open. Taugrim was blown away by this story, but they were interrupted. It seems the Magi is now ready for Hunter to deal with his werebear situation. But in the meantime, as the heroes have been talking, Kettle, played by Bastian, is walking around Bliss, doing chores of his own. Kettle would just like to uh, find a place, quiet place underneath a tree or close to some uh, some wildlife and uh, sit and meditate. Okay, as uh, Kettle is sitting there, meditating under the tree, you notice in your eyes a woman standing not far off. So I have a... I spot the woman. It's in your vision. I mean, as you're meditating, it's in your vision that you see this old woman plucking apples. And she says to you, Hi, Kettle. A sad, sad faith the halflings are going through. This time is vicious. It's been going on for too long. It is good that you have come, Kettle. It is good you have found your friends. This will change the faith of the halflings. I see it. As long as you stay true to the path and the cause, all will be well. For I see dangers in the future also, Kettle. Be wary who you trust. Do you smell it? Sulfur in the air. There is something coming and I cannot see what it is. Hmm. There definitely are dangers in your future that I cannot see, Kettle. Predicting destiny and future is an unstable thing. But you look like you are on the right path. Concerning the halflings anyway. Ah, yes. And you see that she is standing by the tree. And this time, instead of plucking the apple, she takes a branch. She breaks it off. Cleans it of leaves. She, you see her saying some things. Like blessing the branch. She gives it to you. Here. Take this kettle. I take it. But who are you? What is... I normally get vivid visions, but they are more like colors and flowers and... Uh... I... I am the earth. I am nature. I am creation. What is your name? Concentrate on the halflings, Kettle. And you see this woman turning into leaves. And just as the leaves are blown apart by the wind, she says, For I am Bushka. I am with you, my son. Well, I sort of sit and remain still, meditate, and to start off with, I think Kettle probably would be startled because it's much more of a precise vision that he's used to. He's used to getting all sort of, you know, like dreamish shapes um, that's, that sort of comes in and out. Um, on a daily basis, so it's not unusual for him to have visions, but he doesn't, he just interprets some philosoph philosophical meaning of them, but he doesn't know anything about what they should mean. But this is a very clear uh, sign, so he would probably be startled out of his meditation, even though he should, would probably still sit and, and try and focus. So, um, so yeah, I think, but after a little while, I would probably open my eyes and, and look around, see if he, she was still there. Yeah, as you look, you uh, notice that, no, there's no woman standing by the tree. But you see a basket of apples standing by the foot of the tree, where she was plucking them. Okay. 
Do I have the stick in my hand? Yeah, you do. You have it in your hand. I just turn it around and uh, can I inspect it? See what it? Yeah, sure. Okay. What does it? Uh, what does it look like? Does it look? Does it look like just an ordinary stick? Uh, yeah, but no. It looks like a, a stick from a tree, but it has the shape of a wand. It looks like a wand. Okay. I. Uh, I try to figure out what, what where it comes from, what sort of tree this this branch would originate from. Well, you, you saw her breaking it off the tree right in front of you, and the tree that you are uh, looking at is made of oak. It's made from oak, okay. And I sit and focus on the item handling it. As you are looking at the wand, concentrating on it, um, feeling it, um, you wave it around and you cast a spell with it. As you're slowly getting attuned to it. Um, and where the the magic lands, you see water coming out of the earth in a like in a small puddle, and uh, food appears in front of you. Uh, rations. Okay. And do I know how I did this? Well, yeah, you do. You uh, came, became attuned to the wand and you just threw the magic out of it. Okay. Um, well, this is... This is great. Um, I should tell Targrim about this. Now we don't have to... Now I can make food for everyone. And then I... Uh, I will probably... Kel, Kel will go and... Uh, and, and relay all of this to... Uh, no, he would actually take one of the apples from the basket and try and, try and eat it. Uh, as you, Kettle, take the apple and, and eat it, you feel that it's the most nourishing apple you have ever eaten before. You feel completely replenished. If you had any um, sense of uh, tiresome or, um, or exhaustment. Okay, then he takes the basket with him and then... Uh, and he goes and relays all of this to Targum. Should what, what should I call the stick? Create of food and water. And uh, no, not stick. Wand of create food and water. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you will go back into Bliss and you find Targum standing there in the hut. Targum. I don't know, uh, I had this, you, you know, I usually sit around the uh, the old birch tree just just beneath the, the, the meadows, you know the place. Um, but today something happened. Yeah, I know the tree. What happened? Uh, try an apple, by the way. <laughs> and I give him the basket. He uh, takes the apple, looks at it. And I take an apple as well. And he then says... You want me to try an apple? He looks kind of weirdly at you, but then bites into the apple, and as he bites in it, the juices run by his, by his cheek, and his eyes open wide, and he can just... You see it in his eyes, and he's amazed by the taste of it. This... this is extraordinary. The taste is like nothing I've ever tried before, and I feel totally replenished from that just that one apple. How did you come upon this extraordinary apple? Did it grow from your tree? I had a vision. And do you know, by the way, do I know of Bushka? Oh yeah, most definitely. He, she is um, the god of nature and the earth and the druids of your forest. Definitely worship her. You're probably not going to believe this, but I had a vision where Bushka sought me. And uh, she gave me this. And with this, we don't have to think about food or water or anything. Um, can, do you have a... Uh, uh, a place where you can have water in it. He grabs a bucket and you can see in his eyes that he is, he is uh, dumbstruck by what you're saying, that the god of the earth herself has communicated with you. So he doesn't utter a word yet and just looks at you, holding the bucket in his hand, giving it to you. And I uh, use the wand on it. And he shoots energy to the bucket and it just fills up with water. And I use the wand next to him to create food. And then bread and fruit and vegetables uh, appear on the ground and uh, Taugrim just standing there and his uh, jaw just drops on the ground and then he says to you This is amazing! He quickly picks up the bread and breaks it to feel it and sense it is real and then he says in utter amazement It's not an illusion. It's real! 
The goddess of the earth itself has blessed us. I'm in utter amazement. Truly, truly, this is the right path we've taken, Kadal. I know. So even the gods have come to aid us then. Some of them are. But she also gave me a more, what should we say, uh, disturbing uh, advice. That we should be careful who we trust. That goes for you too. I see. Well, luckily I'm very careful by nature. That's why I was so hesitant to help you in the beginning, as you know. But this is good advice. A good reminder that now is not the time to let my guard down. To be more vigilant. Our inner ring is expanding with this rebellion, and we have let a lot of people enter bliss. Nevertheless, you have checked them. And we're keeping a close eye on them. Yeah, but now we have uh, one thing less to worry about. Maybe you should, if this can create food and water, then maybe you should carry the wand and I hand him the wand. Are you sure, Kedal? The wand was given to you. We're probably not going to. If we are going out on missions, it, it'll serve the people here better than it'll serve us. The people of Bliss, thank you. This will be their salvation. Now I don't need to worry about feeding them. And uh, these apples, give them to the, to the most uh, hungry families. I think you would know how that they, uh, they would appreciate them. And I give them the rest of the basket. Well, thank you. He takes the basket and has a sincere look of gratitude in his eyes. And as he's to leave to hunt, he looks at you and says... We're on the right path. And we are blessed by Burka. We will succeed. And I will go and meditate and give thanks. And he uh, leaves. I think I'll go and uh, meditate some more then. So uh, Taurgren went to give thanks to Burska for his blessing and letting him know that Burska is near. Uh, Kettle also went to meditate some more and in the meantime, Hunter, what are you gonna do now? Um, I think I was gonna. I'm gonna go. I was gonna go talk to that maid. Yeah. Some time has passed since you had your discussion with uh, Tower Grim, uh, talking about uh, future events, and you've been walking around Bliss since. Now, half a day later, Tower Grim comes up to you, puts his hands on your shoulder, and says, "Are you ready?" Yeah, I'm ready. Good. So is the Magi. Let's go to a secure place. It's made ready. Uh, Taugrim then leads you, Hunter, to a guarded tent. You see soldiers standing outside. And when they enter, it is made ready f for you with candles. You smell herb essence in the air. There are statues of Bushka and a blanket on the ground where it looks like there's like a ritual um, circle around it made out of leaves, uh, twigs, plants and uh, uh, herbs. And it's made for you to lie on. Everything's ready. Lay down and rest. The Magi will be here shortly. All right. He's called Kuruk. And then you hear a humanoid coming close. Um, you hear it this way that it, uh, it seems like the steps are large. And uh, you hear rattles of bones. And as you, he comes in, you see this thin, large, blue-skinned humanoid. He has white dreadlocks. You see he has... Um, bone bracelets in his hair around his neck around his arms he looks very skinny he looks old worn out and he has a walking stick and as he enter he says I am on I sense demonic power in here okay. and he points at you hunter Tell me, is it master over you, or are you master over it? Um, um, well, right now it's probably master over me. <laughs> um, that's why I would like to get it fixed. Truthful, this one. I like it. It will help the procedure. I cannot work with lies. And he walks over to you, Hunter, uh, uncomfortably close to you and starts smelling you, sniffing you. Lycanthropy. 
Good morning. You essence are not of the wolf. Am I right? It is of the bear. A were bear. Yes, it is. I will help you by. And you see him grabbing uh, in a pouch he has hanging on the side. He takes out a talisman, uh, which the, the likeness of a werewolf. He puts it back in the bag and takes another one out with the likeness of a bear. He uh, takes it and uh, gives it to you, Hunter, and says, Take this talisman, hold it close to your heart, boy. And he claps his hand together, rubbing it, and um, dead skin and dust falls out of his palm, and they start lighting up. He, char he starts chanting and says to you, When I tell you, boy, take the talisman of the bear and break it in two, and your curse shall break. Now let me get into your soul. And he puts his hands on you. And he starts uh, chanting. He, his body swings around. And then you see like a smile on his, hand, on his face. Then suddenly the expression of his face changes. He frowns. The look on his face becomes more serious. And then he... Uh, grabs the talisman, talisman out of your hand, rips it away and says, something is not right here. He grabs the talisman and tries to break it, rip it in two, but nothing happens. He looks at your face, frowning. Brother, it cannot be done. There is more here than mere lycanthropy. He then throws off his rags, revealing how skinny he really is. You can see his ribs and everything. He looks at Tawagrim and says, Tawagrim, brother, everyone out. This will take more deeper concentrations. I must not be disturbed. And then the Tawagrim uh, says also, You heard him. Everyone out. Leave us. And Taugrim looks at him, and Magi looks also at him and says, Lakuruk also looks at him and says, You too, Taugrim. I will talk to you after. I must find out how serious this is. As you wish, Kuruk. I'll be right outside. And before, Hunter, you uh, even uh, react to all this, he waves his hand over your head and uh, casts a spell of sleep on you. And you are out. Now... You don't sense or know for how long that you've been sleeping, but suddenly you wake up, heavy in your head. And as you look up, you're still in the tent, you see Kuruk the Magi standing um, ten feet away from you, leaning on the staff, just looking at you. We need to talk, Hunter. And he has... Your bow in his hands, made out of the horns. He says to you, Even if I wanted to remove this bow for you, I could not. For I know now that it is bound to you. And your lycanthropy has somehow magically intertwined with your, let's call it, warlock side. Mm. It is bound together. Did you know your power streams from the bow? Yeah, that's what I've been told. Well, I definitely am feeling very connected to it. I didn't know exactly how it works, but... You have a powerful Patreon, Nanda. I know not your alliance to it, but I must warn you. It has intertwined your heart and life essence to this bow. I cannot remove you like a ruby hunter. I am so sorry. But it is your Patreon who will not allow it. There's something else I find very hard to understand. 
There is another life essence born to the bow as well, not only you. I don't know if you have angered your Patreon and he has found another. Because you both stream the same power. Mm. Another being. I sense its demonic nature. There are two lives bound to the Patreon you have. And somehow this bow. That means he has the same power as you, Hunter. Well, yeah, and then some, probably. If your bow is to break, you will die, Hunter. So will the other one bound to it. This is hard for me to understand. And probably you as well. And it will, of course, severely weaken your Patreon, if not kill him. I cannot tell. But what happens to your bow, Hunter, will have severe consequence. One of three. So, what you're saying is I'm fucked. Immensely. It seems some decisions you have made with your Patreon has angered him severely. Some task maybe you did not want to do, and now he found another to do his bidding. But there may be something we can do, Hunter. While you were sleeping, I took the liberty in talking to Tawagurim about your situation. There may be a way for you to trick your Patreon. Okay, well, but how would I do that? Do you? Tawagrim told me about a soul crystal you have retrieved. Now I would advise Tawagrim to dismantle this soul crystal, for they are hard to control and they feed on life essence, but in this case it is good that he has hidden it. Because you can trap the soul of your Patreon inside. And if you do, you can control your bow without your Patreon interfering. As long as you keep the crystal on the bow. But Hunter, this is no easy task, for you must meet your Patreon in an anthropomorphic form, and you must cut it down so the body dies, and lay the crystal on the corpse and it will suck its life force inside. Then connect the crystal to your bow, and you will have full control of your power. But... It will not be easy. His new chosen will of course defend him with all his power. And when it comes to your lycanthropy, there is nothing I can do, Hunter. I am sorry. You must find another way. Perhaps if you will ever succeed in binding your Patreon and killing his other Come back to me. I shall try again. Maybe then it can be removed. I do not know. I am sorry. There is not more I can do. And now I leave. And uh, Guruk, the Magi, leaves the tent. Yeah. In the meantime, Tawagrim has returned to the tent. He says to you, That was a lot to take in, and I have no knowledge of this. No. Do you want me to go and dig up the soul crystal? Well, you don't need to do that just yet. I will have to find um, the one I have to um, imprison first. Ah, uh, no clue where to start. That's true. So, I'm gonna have to find that out. Um, but for now, I think we just need to move on with our 
our mission. And after what it did to your friend Hadurai, best not to be carrying it around for too long. Yeah. So am I. I yeah. just, yeah. I'm afraid it's gonna end bad. I understand. But Hunter, we will do anything we can to help you. Well, it's not me I'm worried about. It's the people I travel with. Yeah, I see what you mean. But to be brutally honest, Hunter, my main concern is still the safety of the people of Bliss, and your situation worries me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need to think about what we're gonna do going forward. Yeah. As Togrim and Hunter are talking, two scouts come into their tent, interrupting them. Togrim, there's something important you need to know. Well, out with it, boy. We're among trusted allies. As you wish. There's been reports of loud hammer banging, echoing in the forests, and the sounds have been tracked to the Great Wall leading into Midmorrow. By Bushka, what madman would do such a thing? If the walls into the barren lands are broken down, Vash and his armies would be the least of our concerns. But that's just, just door down. That's just dumb. He must be a madman. Uh, there's more, Talgrim. It is reported that the man looks like the general from Morrowtown West. But that makes no sense. He must have lost it. It can't be on King Vash's orders. The king will benefit nothing from Westmorrow becoming overrun by the vile beasts of Midmorrow. And the general and all his men, including the townspeople, will surely die if he does this. But there's more. What? The report says the general looks, well, different. Different? Different how? Disformed and, yeah, even larger. It can't be him, then. They sure it is. It is him. Well, I guess we should check it out. Um, I think I'm gonna go get uh, Kettle. Yes, you do that, Hunter. And as you leave to uh, find Kettle, Taugrim continues talking to the scouts. This makes no sense. He never leaves Morrowtown West. What is he planning? So I go, <coughs> I go find uh, Kettle. So, summer is wonderful at this season. Uh, Kettle? Do you like an Sweet. apple? Uh, <laughs> not right now, but thank you. Uh, rain check. Uh, we have the, this an issue. Can we can we wait? Uh, probably not. Okay. It's like you know, world ending type stuff. Okay, I get out of my uh, meditation once <laughs> I'm sitting up against the tree and I stand up. Okay, what's wrong? Uh, apparently somebody's trying to break down the door into that, you know, demon place or evil place in the middle of the island with all the monsters. And we should... Oh, okay. Why? Why would anybody do Yeah, that? good question. Uh, but I think we should go check it out. Okay. And probably stop them because I think that would be bad. Well, let's, let's do that then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, right? that's, it was a brilliant idea. Can we? You, you don't think we can talk them out of doing well, it? Well, we can try. We can see. We, I have no clue, honestly. We just the scout came back and said there was somebody trying to get in. So okay. Uh, so yeah, I think um, we should uh, we should at least check it out. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Well, let's let's go at once. We can't have them bringing down. The barrier. No, no. We have enough with the crazy king. Uh, don't need monsters <laughs> as well. Especially that big spider thing. That's, that's a little bit late for that. Well, yeah, but for now it's in there, so I assume it's... Hopefully it's staying. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Okay. But yeah, let's go. Uh, but it's kind of far away, isn't it? Mm. Maybe we could... Push. No, how is it with those owls? We can fly for an hour. Yeah, I won't get us there, but we can fly 120 feet up for Should we go ask Tauger? Maybe he has uh, some way to get us there fast. So Yeah, I can't really do much more than that. No, no. Uh, we'll go well, I can also make horses, but we can probably just get them here as well. Yeah, yeah. I was just I'm more thinking flying or teleporting or something like that would be. But let's go ask uh, Tauger. Um, so after finding Kettle, you both return to Talgrim, and Talgrim is standing, um, talking to uh, some of his men. You see him um, shaking his head as you approach, and he says, Are you sure? 
undeniable uh, reports from the scouts. This is yes. immensely urgent. I know this is urgent. Hunter says he and Kettle will go and check it out. And as you get closer to Taugrim, talking to his men, he sees you and uh, says to you... You found him. Good. We must act quickly. There have arrived two more scouts from Morrowtown West. They've confirmed this is the general. And it makes no sense. The town is defenseless now. And he's trying to break down that massive wall. Something has happened to him. And another thing, Hunter. The scouts found out the name of the general. Okay. It should be familiar to you. It's Leonard Breeden. Okay. Is that the king's nephew. Who gave you the fake gold in four-way. Oh, it's that guy! Seems the king did not punish him or send him to jail. He was just stationed over here. <gasps> but that doesn't explain what happened to him. Or what he is doing. Mm. Oh, well then it's easy, then we have to kill him. If the stories are true, and by your accounts, then yes. There are many reasons this man should be killed. Why? Because he owes me money. Can we just ask him politely to no. give me your money back? He must no. be stopped, by any means necessary, before he breaks down that wall. Uh, he's a bad guy, generally. I think... Uh and why why is he a bad guy? Have, have I met him before? Yeah, matter of fact, you you do kettle. When you first joined the game, um, Hunter and Hadurai freed you from imprisonment, escaping four way, and you were taken to the king's court. Yeah. You were sitting there at the king's court, and mm. there were different kinds of people brought forth to the to the court of the king, and this Leonard Breeden was one of the generals who actually was brought in front of the king and. You were told about his betrayal, and Hunter was talking about it, so you have witnessed the stories of this Leonard Breton, uh, the king's nephew who betrayed the people of Fourway, or definitely the gnomes of Fourway, because he wanted uh, the, the ore in Gnome Hill, where, which belonged to the gnomes, and he couldn't buy it off them, so he got some men to get rid of the gnomes, and he didn't care how it was done. Uh, and it was found out that they were actually slaughtered and then okay. uh, served in the local pub as a stew, actually a famous stew. And he was confronted by a soldier who had a uh, suspicion of this called Benno, and he became angry with him. He cut out his tongue, beat him up, so nobody would tell anything about this. But the Hunter and Hadarath found it out and got the information all the way over to Bliss, Angel's Bliss, told the king, and the general was captured, he was brought to the court, and as far as you, Hadurai and Hunter, thought he was prisoned, or exiled somehow, but it seems he was just sent over here to Westmorrow, stationed as a new general, so the king was merciful to his nephew. Okay, I, I, judge, I, uh, I trust your judgment on this one. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely pro-slaves, he... You know, he's generally bad guy. He cut the tongue out of one of his men because he could talk about him. And also, he does not pay what he promises. So it's like generally bad. Yeah, he, he actually hired Hunter and Hadurai to find out what was happening to the gnomes because he didn't think that one, ever, one would ever find out what had happened. And then he would have a contract telling that he tried to do something about it and to save his own skin. But Hadurai and Hunter did find out. And this was before he knew the involvement of the general himself. He just thought, he would just try to blame it on the men who, who killed the gnomes. And he paid Hunter and Hadurai with fake money. We should start by detaining him. What about that? And then, then we can yeah, see. Let's, let's go and see. Maybe he will not be detained. Okay, okay. You know, so let's uh, let's go there and see. Stuff like that depends on how you handle the situation. You might be able to. Okay, I'll let handle. you. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you talk to If him. you do the shooting, I do the talking, okay? Yeah, that's fine. And that's fine. just in the opposite order. Okay, so if so I do you the talking, talk you do the Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> fine. Uh, but Targrim, um, do you have any way of getting us there fast? Like, do you have some... Some flying mounts, or like, uh, like, um, I don't know, yeah, a short range teleport or something. Yeah, like that. you're in luck. We've nursed two griffins back to health. They were just deemed healthy enough to be released back into the wild. You can use them before releasing them. Oh, cool. 
That's convenient. Then yeah. Taugrim leads you to uh, where the griffins are. Uh, he has a concerned look on his face as he's settling uh, the griffins. And as you are uh, lifted up on onto the griffin hunter, he says to you... Hunter, something's not right here. Oh yeah, a lot of things. I feel a bad omen. I agree. The general was safe in his town. Why would he leave and do something like this? It seems weird. If he breaks down that wall, everything in Westmar will die. He must be stopped. But that's why we have to stop him. And then uh, Taugrim goes over to uh, Ketal, puts a hand on his shoulder and says, Kettle, watch yourself, boy. There are many dangers on your journey. We were not able to remove Hunter's issue. Watch your back. Go and save your people of Westmorrow. Burka be with you. He then gives him a tight hug. I hug him back. And you fly off. Now, as you are flying, you're going to the direction to uh, this wall. You hear the loud bangs. It's actually shocking to you hear how loud it is compared to the distance of the height in the air and from where the wall is. And as you fly, the bangs come louder, become louder, and become louder, and you become more worried. And the heroes are off flying to the wall. Now, this will be interesting what will happen at this wall. Now, I don't know if you remember, but someone else was also asked to do the same thing. Break the walls leading to East Morrow. But he made a decision not to do it. It doesn't seem that Hunter remembers any of this. This is also the west side of the wall, so maybe it doesn't make the connection. But it will be interesting to see if he's gonna connect the dots when he arrives at that wall. We just have to wait for next week to see what happens, guys. This is all for this episode. Thank you, nerds, and goodbye. Thanks for stopping by. Hey guys, remember if you like the show, do leave a comment, like or subscribe on whichever platform you're listening to us. You can also visit us on our homepage at nordicdnd.podpin.com or our YouTube channel. If you like cool sound effects like this. Go to our homepage at potbean.nordicdnd.com, click on battlebars.com and let them know Nordic D&D sent you.